Okay. Oh, I want to say, um, uh, by the way, before we leave your report, uh, I saw the uh, the numbers from uh, from Karen on the foundation um, about the potential of people to give. Uh, which I thought was very interesting. So maybe sometime in the near future you can come and talk to us about uh, what you're doing with all that data and how you extracted that data. We wanted to do it today, but we had a full boat. No, no, so, not today. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, so we'll, uh, we'll do it in May. Yeah, yeah we'll do it in May or June, whatever it fits in. Yeah, okay. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. That's great. That's good. Thank you. Item six, approval of board policies and objectives. Um, we we'll do these one at a time right now. Uh, 6.1, policy 403, students' rights, responsibilities, revised, second reading. I'll seek a motion on that. So, okay. <laughs> <Any comments>, questions? Yes, <laughs> uh, Roll call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kahneman? Yes, Ms. Paul? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Dr. Kerrigan? Aye. Ms. Gashkari? Aye. Dr. Griffin? Aye. Ms. Howell? Mrs. Olshire. Aye. 6.2, Policy 611, Employment Practices and Procedures for Revised Second Reading. Take a motion on that. Second. I mean, second. Second. Okay, sorry. Discussion. Mm -hmm. Six point, uh, roll call. Mr. Kandanar? Upstate. Ms. Paul? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Dr. Kerrigan? Aye. Ms. Gashgari? Aye. Dr. Griffin? Aye. Ms. Howell? Mrs. O'Shaughnessy. Aye. 6.3, policy 651, dismissal, revised second reading, and 6.4, policy 928, contract employees, revised second reading. I'll seek a motion, please. So Second. Comments or questions? Yeah, on uh, 6.3. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Kahneman? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Dr. Kerrigan? Yes. Thank you. Yes. The very last paragraph is something awkward with the with the language. Of the grant funded specials employed termination by the board or external agency discontinuing the grant funding for the applicable project. Or I, I, project. Yeah. Just I don't know. Extra something. word. Is that what it is? Rachel. Yeah, I'll just take the A out. Yeah, take the A out. Take the A out of there. Okay. Good night. Good deal. Mr. Kahneman? Ms. Paul? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Dr. Kerrigan? Aye. Ms. Gasheri? Aye. Dr. Griffin? Aye. Ms. Howell? Aye. Mrs. Oldshire? Aye. Six point five policy 936 overtime revised second reading motion please. So moved. Comments or questions? Roll call. Mr. Kahneman? Ms. Paul? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Dr. Kerrigan? Aye. Ms. Gashgarian? Aye. Dr. Griffin? Aye. Ms. Howell? Aye. Mrs. Oldfather? Aye. 6.6 6, policy 939 non-bargaining unit employees employment compensation Compensation benefits, revised second reading, <coughs> and 6.7, policy 948, tuition reimbursement, second reading as well. I see the motion on 6.6 .6 and 6.7, please. Second. Comments? Yes, I have two concerns on both of them. Okay. Okay, um, let's start out with, um, on 6.6, .6, yes. um, in what page, well, page 36 and page 37, <coughs> Okay, D4, cafeteria plan. Mm -hmm. um, I called President Weber yeah. about mm -hmm. this before the meeting because um, in the bottom paragraph on page 36, <coughs> we talk about the annual contribution to employees before 2007, where, um, you know, this is $90, dollars I guess. So my mm -hmm. question is, how much does this cost us on an <coughs> annual basis? And is there anything that we can do about that? Is there, is it fruitful to look at that to see if there's anything that we can do about that practice that we have? Julia, I'll give you the numbers and then 
if you're directing us to do that, we'd be glad to try and, and see what we can do and bring back a plan to you. So, Julia, the numbers? Do you know how much it costs us this year? I just wondered what kind of a, if this is a small matter or if it's a more significant matter. I have it here. Okay. We have, um, of the, uh, right now we have administrator, classified specialists, and uh, facilities and FOP union employees that qualify under this. And the total uh, individuals uh, are 187. Uh, that non-union of that is 144, but 187 total employees covered by this. Out of, out of what size? Uh, out of, let's see, we have two, we have 417 total with, with the faculty. About 40% somewhere. And then there's another, um, <laughs> non, non DAL is two, six, another 264 employees. So in dollars, how much are we paying out in that? Uh, in dollars, it is 1.7 million. It's being paid out uh, in DAL dollars, but then we get back uh, a little over 300000 almost 313000 So, so this is a million and a half a year yeah. 1. that 4. we spent on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 1% of our budget. Well, I still think that if somebody could look at it to yeah. see if there's anything that can be done. Okay, then I have um, another concern. Mm -hmm. This is a personal concern. It's um, par paragraph G. Um, where we get, and this on page 39 and page 40, where we get into G3 and G, um, I guess it's all in G3, um, where we have carryover vacation time that for some individuals as much as seven weeks and where we have payment of individuals after they leave the institution of, a, of up to three months of pay. And I personally have a problem with carryover vacation, and I think that's excessive. And I have a problem with paying people after they leave. So I'm really not going to vote for this because I think that that's inappropriate to do. I don't think it's a good use of our funds to be paying people after they're no longer working here or to allow carryover vacation time that extends to that amount. So I think it's excessive. Okay. Can you, uh, can you expand can we, uh, on what you, what you mean by paying people after they no longer work? Um, if you, what I mean, what I, that's my, I'm sorry, that's my wording, okay. but what I'm looking at is this language here that's on page 40, that an employee who submits for retirement will be able to accrue vacation with no carryover cap, blah, blah, but during the last year of work, the employee may accrue up to a cap of 56 days as of the last day of work. So that means that they have compensation coming to them of like three months' time. And I think that after somebody's done here, they should be done here. And if you didn't use up all your sick days or you didn't use up all your vacation days, that was your choice. I personally, if we're in charge of finances, don't think we should be paying people after they leave. Okay. So that's how I described it. All right. Let, uh, let me make a suggestion on that if I may, Trustee. Uh, uh, I'd like to hold that discussion for closed session so that we could talk about benefits in closed session. Okay, that's fine. So then can I tell you my comment on the next one? Sure. Yeah. Next policy. Or you can do it in six point six. And six point seven. Or um, you have something on six point seven? I have a con I have a comment on six point seven. Those are tuition, benefits. The tuition reimbursement. Oh. And it's just I don't think this is a touchy one. But it's up to you what you want to do. I'd like to hold it because it does relate to benefits in closed session. Even though it's a policy? Yeah, should we be talking policies in closed session? Yeah, I don't think so. Is it well, we're going to vote on it or not vote on it. It's up to you guys. Okay, so my concern yeah. in the tuition reimbursement policy is that I think we should have it in the policy that we're talk we have talked about this before, that if we're going to get reimbursement for these advanced degree programs that we were going to require that the individual stay at the institution for a period of time after 
that education has been paid for. We did say that. We did say that. But or or reimbursed. Hmm? Or reimbursed. Or reimbursed for part of the tuition. Right. But that's not in the policy. And we have in the policy that somebody has to be working here a period of time before they're eligible for this. So I think it's logical that we can also put in the policy that they have to stay a period of time after the tuition reimbursement because then the institution can derive the benefit from the investment. And I was told that that's going to be in the procedure, but I feel that once it goes into the procedure, the board loses control. And the um, reality of having that being a requirement is not going to be as carefully guarded as if it were in the policy. I think that's a point well taken. If the board wants us, we can come back next month on this tuition. There's no time sense in that sense. We can come back on this with new language regarding that. Or we can go ahead. Well, I, I also think, uh, piggybacking on that, that the employee puts the time into the college after attaining this advanced degree, which is very expensive, and if they don't put that time over in, that there's a payback. Yeah, we college. talked about that. Yeah, we'll put, we'll put in clear payback provision language if that's the will of the board, and yeah. we have worked with our attorneys on that. Well, maybe well, we ought to talk about what like time frame we think because I wasn't specific in that and I don't know if anybody is. But do you think that you would say that someone needs to stay at the institution a year, two years, three years, five, five years? I don't know. But we didn't talk about specifics, but I kind of think something needs to be in the policy. Sure, sure. We'll, we can put language in. We, we can look at other policies and, and look at our procedures and move some of the procedures into the language like you're indicating. And then we'll show it to you ahead of time with some feedback. But whatever you want. I mean, if you want to throw out some time frames now, I mean. Well, I would think a year for a master's and two years for a doctorate. Okay. I think we should also see what is best practice is. I mean, we don't yeah, really know. Well, just what yeah, they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean best practices as other people do it. Yeah, but it gives you, a sense it gives you some guidelines. Yeah. Of, yeah. Well, at. if we're going to do that, why don't we address our other concern uh, and see what's going on in the rest six. of the world? 6.6? Yeah. yeah that that would be my suggestion. Yeah, let's do that and that will prove it tonight. Well, let me see on that. There might be a time issue. Vacation. Um, it was 6.6. <coughs> point six. Um, so 6.6 six and 6.7 six seven seven. both need mm -hmm. further review gotcha. before yeah. it comes back to us. And he was saying 38, page 38, 39. <coughs> page, yeah, page 39. I don't think it's part of the benefits that we're talking about. Uh, 39 this and 40. a lot of benefits. It's, it's just it's a policy. It's a lot of benefits. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, I'd like to talk about uh, tuition reimbursement in that first paragraph. I, you know, yes. I strongly disagree that we uh, we give reimbursement only to job-related college credit coursework or uh, the one below that uh, individuals' confidence and effectiveness to the college. Uh, this this discriminates against the janitor, the secretary, the, someone that wants to better their, their lot in life, and we're educators. This is an education institution. We should be promoting education, especially uh, the first four years of higher ed. And therefore, I, I, I just... Job related? Is that the language you're looking at? Job related. For? Something what, what in there. Page that, he's on page 45. He's, he's back on the other one on 45. But which paragraph? The first paragraph. paragraph. So, Julia, you know, talk to that a little bit because I, you know, I'm aware of that concern. It's been expressed, and I talked to Julia about it. So, we have that in there, designed for the purpose of professional development. And so, I think, Rich, what you're, we put that language in okay. and uh, address that concern. So, if you had, let's say, you had someone, and actually, we had that someone in the specialist ranks, for instance, who wanted to get a teaching degree, you know, and yeah. see if they could teach here, etc. So if it would fall under a professional improvement plan, as I understand it, or you want to speak to that? Right. I did have a discussion with actually our benefits uh, service attorney with Robin Schwartz, too, as far as what, you know, because there's a potential tax implication as well, you know, 
under IRS code as far as having, you know, being able to cross the